the golden age of ancient Greece. The years following the defeat of Persia between 480 BC and 430 BC are regarded by historians as the golden age since the most glorious achievements of Greece in the field of art, literature, theater, government, philosophy, mathematics and sports occurred during this period. Athens reached its height of power and glory under the able leadership of the Athenian statesman Pericles, whose career spanned most of the Golden Age. Pericles was one of the most prominent and influential statesmen around, a great orator, and lastly, the general of Athens. The city of Athens was named after the goddess Athena, who was the guardian goddess of Athens and was supposed to protect the city. The Athenians built a special temple in Athena's honor on top of the Acropolis, a hill in Athens, and named it Parthenon. Its decorated sculptures are considered some of the high points of Greek art, and it is also regarded as an enduring symbol of ancient Greece and of Athenian democracy. It is among the highlights of Greek architecture and is considered to be the most beautiful building in the world, even though it is now in ruins. In the center of this temple was a huge statue of Athena made of gold and ivory by a sculptor named Phidias. Another unique feature of the Golden Age in Greece was its democratic government. The word democracy is a Greek word, meaning the government of the people. And this democratic form of government was established in Athens and headed by Pericles. All the citizens of Athens except women and slaves were members of the General Assembly and it was known as Ecclesia. The general business of the government was carried out by a council of 500 members which was called the Senate. Military and foreign affairs of the state were controlled by a powerful board of ten generals called the Strategi. Athens had a citizen's court of justice which protected the rights of the Athenians. There were no magistrates and hence only juries decided the cases. Under the Athenian democracy, citizens were known to be extremely devoted and patriotic. Athens produced a few of the most revered philosophers of all times. For instance, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle were considered the most important Greek philosophers. The beauty of Socrates' character made the Athenians forget the ugliness of his face. He encouraged people to use their reasoning power and mainly by asking questions he let people find out for themselves what he wanted them to know. This kind of teaching has been called Socratic teaching. Plato was a pupil of Socrates and a great writer who opened a public school in Athens named the Academy a place where students were taught by the question and answer method that enabled them to think freely. Aristotle was a student at the academy and the most famous pupil of Plato. He was both a philosopher and a scientist and wrote on varied subjects like philosophy, physics, chemistry and medicine. People flocked to shrines called oracles to consult priests and priestesses who could foretell the future. The most important oracle was at Delphi. The Greeks believed in deities that possessed superhuman powers and were immortal. The chief deities lived on Mount Olympus and were known as Olympians. Zeus and his wife Hera ruled over Olympus. The other important gods were Apollo, the god of music, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Ares, the god of war, and Athena, the goddess of wisdom.
When it came to Greek literature, the most important form of the same was epic poetry. Epics were long poems narrating the heroic deeds of men and divine beings. The greatest Greek poet was Homer, who composed two famous epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey. These beautiful stories were a mixture of true and imaginary stories about the war between Greece and Troy and the adventures of Ulysses. The Greeks also developed lyrics poetry which was sung by street singers accompanied by the flute. The Greeks attached great importance to the theatres which served as means of entertainment as well as education. Drama, especially tragedy, became the most important literary form during the Golden Age. The four greatest Greek playwrights were Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides and Aristophanes. Their plays are still performed today and many modern plays are based on Greek plays. The theatres in Greece were not like most of those we have now. They were always outdoor theatres, usually on the side of the hill where a grandstand could be built facing the stage. The Greek theatre at Epidaurus in the Peloponnese boasted of 55 tiers of stone seats accommodating 14,000 spectators fanned steeply like the sides of a bowl around the circular orchestra where the chorus performed. The vast size of Greek theatres made it difficult for actors to convey emotion to distant spectators by facial expressions alone and hence they used masks that instantly identified the characters they were playing as happy or sad, young or old. Music often accompanied plays and poetry recitals in ancient Greece and musicians performed at festivals and private parties. Greek music relied chiefly on melody and rhythm. The Greeks were also the first true historians of this world. Their first historian was Herodotus, often described as the father of history. His major work was an account of the wars between the Greeks and the Persians. Another great Greek historian was Thucydides, who is considered the first scientific historian. He wrote a stirring account of the Peloponnesian War and tried to explain the effects of politics on historical events. The Greeks developed the art of speech-making known as oratory. Pericles and Demosthenes were two great orators. Demosthenes, through his work, aroused among the people the love for liberty and democracy. The Greek buildings, temples, halls and marketplaces have a distinctive beauty of their own. Early Greek paintings and sculptures depicted only religious ideas, but later on these became realistic in nature. Myron, a noted Greek sculptor, specialized in athletic figures, gave to the world his famous statue of a discus thrower. The most famous sculptor of Greek was Phidias, a friend of Pericles. Besides sculpture and architecture, the Greeks excelled in the making of vases and bowls as well as in painting. The Greek vases were painted with scenes from daily life and Greek mythology. By 450 BC, the Greeks were using wooden beams in their temples. Typical Greek architecture was characterized by Doric, Ionic and Corinthian columns which supported the roof like a forest of trees. Indian sculpture was influenced by the Greek way of representing human bodies in stone. The Gandhara school of art is an example of this influence. The Olympic Games had their origin in ancient Greece. The Greeks celebrated their religious festivals with great pomp and show. 
and one such festival was held for the first time in 776 BC at Olympia. The Olympic Games were discontinued by the Romans when they came to rule, but were later revived again in 1896 and are held after every four years ever since. An International Olympic Committee has been formed to organize these games. Many new sports such as swimming, basketball and hockey have also been added to the list of events, while gold, silver and bronze medals are awarded to the winners. The modern world owes most of the development of scientific knowledge to the ancient Greeks. Thales, Pythagoras and Euclid developed the science of geometry and thus studied the movement of stars and planets and proved that the earth was spherical and not flat. Thales predicted an eclipse of the sun as far back as 585 BC, while Eratosthenes calculated the length of the equator and also prepared a map of Europe, Asia and Africa. Democritus put forth the atomistic theory which states that the atom is the smallest particle of matter. Medicine was raised to a science by the ancient Greeks. Hippocrates, known as the father of modern medicine, the Hippocratic Oath named after Hippocrates, gave the medical profession a sense of duty to humanity. The systematic and logical thinking of the Greek scientists led to various inventions such as the Archimedean screw, cranes and pulleys, water clock with dial and hour hand, a lighthouse at Alexandria, the catapult and the forceps.